live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, aspirational, international, keenly awaited, daily created, highly anticipated edition of the afternoon swing training floor with your humble host, Jeremy Alexander Newsom, with another daily dose of mentally delicious brain food reminding each of you to love life, live life, and trade it. What's going on, my friends and fam, fans and followers from around the world? Got so much greatness to talk about. Tracy Ball is first on the chat pane. Bruno says, here we are again. Yes, we are. Albert Chin says, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Albert. Scott McKay says, good afternoon. Awesome traders. Scott McKay's fired up because he had a great Monday. Kevin Lee, welcome. Just as a quick reminder for those who are here, if you can change that chat pane to all attendees, all attendees and panelists, all panelists and attendees so that everyone can read the beautiful things that you're saying so that people don't think that I have an imaginary friend and I'm talking to myself because every now and then that can happen. Alan Stakem says, afternoon, Jeremy. Good afternoon, my friend. Great chat with you. Thanks for texting me. I appreciate it. My boy Adriano is in the building, part of Team Real Life Trading Brazil. What's going on, Adriano? Thanks for being here. Russ says, hola. Ty Medford says, oh, sorry, Tia Medford. Tia and Sandra. Welcome, Tia. Ashley says, I'm here. Beautiful. Let me get um, my gorgeous fiance, a little bit of an upgrade. All right. So promote to panelists. All right, folks, let's dive in. Let's talk about and discuss what we're going to talk about and discuss. Okay, type in a one if you can see my chart. This should be the SPY on the board. So make sure you guys can see that. You can hear me okay. Wonderful. Really quick breakdown. Again, all week long, 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be right here. So today is Merchant Monday. Tomorrow is Tech Giant Tuesday. Tomorrow, after the day after that, is Energy Wednesday. Then Transportation Thursday, followed by Finance Friday. And that is the schedule each and every day. If the market is open, I'm here. And that's pretty much the schedule for every week. And during those days, I look at stocks that you care about. I look at some trades that I'm also looking at and helping people with and doing some trade setups. So we already have a nice list for today. We will be going through those lists. We will see what's there, what's out there, what's happening. And then of course, we will uh, review some other additional setups as well. See what's transpiring and move and crush from there. Um, so let's just dive in, shall we? Cool. First thing I'm going to look at is the SPY, and that's what I do every single day in the afternoon room is check out the SPY. What I'm going to do is just zoom in here. This was a day trade setup that we talked about earlier today, and uh, we discussed you know, getting in at an earlier level this morning around uh, this particular price is kind of when I started setting up that level. Had some targets set up. We caught a little bit of a pop in the day, and then we pulled back and then ended flat. So as far as a day trade is concerned, it would have been a very, very meagerly small gain on the SPY if you took that exact setup, uh, either with options or with shares. But as far as a you know, as far as a bigger picture analysis is concerned, let's talk about it. So on the daily chart, this is the daily chart on the SPY. We have a very, very beautiful candle. So this candle that I'm looking at right here on the SPY is a, is a gorgeous, cute little spinning top, high wave candle of sorts. So what we can pretty much assume at this particular point in time is at any point during this week, if we take out the high or the low of that candle, that is probably the direction of which we will go. I like the fact that we gapped up small, right? The trend on the SPY is obviously still very bullish, but we could break down and have a little bit of a pullback, that's fine. 
If we do that, I will be a dip buying fan. If we gap up or break above the resistance, that's also adequate. And if at any point in time, you know, we start, if we pull into the hourly chart, um, we start bouncing down here, I am looking to go long. That's kind of my permanent direction right now, is looking for long trades. That doesn't mean it's gonna work, but that just simply means that's the direction that I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, this is the hourly chart right here, the hourly time frame, and I'm just realistically looking for some bulls to come in, and, uh, and if not, we can play some bearish moves, that's fine, but the trend right now still looks cute. We're gonna find out more tomorrow or Wednesday at the latest, what way, what direction we're going this week, and we can kind of rock it out from there. The other cool news is if at any point in time, the SPY closes above Friday's candle, because Friday was a relatively bearish day. If we close above Friday's candle on the SPY, we will just continue this bull train that we're on right now. For my futures traders, and uh, here's the E-minis. The E-minis were very choppy today, pretty sideways overall. But here are the, uh, the prices I was looking at this morning. These are my three levels to look for longs on the E-minis. You do have a small little bullish candle, again, with a nice little upper shadow and a nice little lower shadow. So this candle we have today is gonna be relatively important. I do have some people that are saying this could turn into a head and shoulders pattern, which I do not disagree with. It easily could. Now, this head and shoulders pattern is small, so it's not like the end of the world will happen. But we could see if that does turn out to a little bit of a head and shoulders, a small dip, July, August, and then maybe some type of bounce come September, October, potentially. So here's the hourly chart on the E minis. And the current wave count that I have on the E-minis is, this is my thought. I believe that this is some type of one, this is a two, this is a three, this is a four, and this was a five. And what we're gonna have for a little bit is uh, some type of corrective wave. So some A, some B, some C, and then we will eventually go, most again, most likely a little bit higher. Don't know exactly how low the C wave is gonna go, but if I come out to a little bit of a bigger time frame, let's do like a four hour chart. The longs I'm looking for are around 2969, and then I'll look for one at 2963, and then I'll look at 2955. Those are the three prices that if we pull back into those areas, I'll be looking for long plays. Otherwise, I'll just keep an eye out on like the 15 minute chart and kind of see what we do. If we trade down today, which I, I expect us to, uh, then I'll look to buy a dip. And if we trade sideways and hang out for most of the afternoon, which, you know, again, the E-minis open back up in 52 minutes. If we trade sideways, let me go ahead and draw this because I will be trading those tonight. If we uh, hang out and trade sideways and do like one of these numbers and then pop out of here, I'll look for a limit buy to go long. So again, my, my edge, my bias, my direction right now is bullish. Type in a nine if you would like to trade some of those E-minis with me tonight. Any, any futures traders out there? All right, here's some nines. Cool. Well, as promised from the morning session, uh, we discussed that everyone who, de who decides to sign up and join for Real Life Trading, you will get access to the futures channel here on our Slack channel. So I will be there as soon as this afternoon room is done and closed up and they upload everything. In about two hours, I'll be spending a lot of time and attention on that channel tonight. If you wanna do that, we do have some bundles available. We've created those, they're ready to go, and here they are. So if you want access to a lot of our premium products, the link is now available at $249. You're gonna get access to the Hedging with Weekly Options program, which is a phenomenal program. You're gonna get the Back Trading Marathon. You're gonna get the Weekly Options newsletter. You're also gonna get our Cryptocurrencies program, and you're gonna get our Algorithmic Trading program, how to build your own trading robot that also works on futures and equities. You'll get all of that for $249 a month. 
So if you want to trade futures with me tonight, you can access this link right now. It is in the chat pane. If you're watching a recorded version of this, you will also have an email. This link will be in your email if you want this. Any one of these products are worth the price of admission alone, but you're welcome to check that out. Thomas says, do you wait for Japan to open to start trading futures? No, I do not. Eve says, do you hold ES Globex until cash session? Um, I normally am out of all of my e minis positions before cash close. That is correct, but great question. All right, awesome. So let's dive in and see what we got to talk about today. First on the list for Merchant Monday is Lulu, trick symbol L-U-L-U. And Lulu was a swing trade that we got in on back over here, uh, specifically on the 25th of June is when most traders got filled. So on this particular day. And the way we played that was very simple. This trade was actually created by Blake Anderson. I was in Canada during that time and did not get filled until two days later, but got filled at the same price. And the way he created that trading plan was very simple. Boom, 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 it had a new all-time high. And he said, hey, we're at a new all-time high, let me buy the dip. So we set up a limit buy at 178.20, which is that green line. And our stop was down here where it says old stop at 170.20. So it just, we, all we did is just simply buy at a previous old resistance. That was it. So previous old resistance, boom, right there. Broke out, pull back, and then we kind of traded sideways. After this candle came in on Thursday, this lower shadow candle, we took the stop loss for three quarters of our position and moved it up to 186.56. That stop loss got hit today. So for those traders in the real life trading community who have been in that trade for the past uh, month or so, congratulations. We got trailed out for right at 1R on Lulu. So able to lock in a 1R gain, which was good. It was a good trade, nice little setup. So that one is done. Uh, so from now, what do we want to do on Lulu? Well, the trend is still bullish. Can't argue that. You did have a really interesting doji candle on July 17th. This doji candle represented a little bit of indecision. So you got the higher lows, you got the relative highs, and you got that doji right there. So now that you have two bearish candles back to back, what I'm planning on doing at this particular point in time um, is looking at the next dip buy. So thinking about it at this level, if you're playing Lulu, my overall thought process on it is let's try to buy it as low as we can, uh, which again would probably be back at that exact same support. So something like right around here. So if you're looking at playing Lulu, earnings are not until like beginning of September, you'd probably look to play at something like this. Very similar to the setup that we had previously, but just a little bit lower. 177.23 by 168, we can make it 168.23. So if you're looking at buying Lulu on a swing trade, this would pretty much be it. Uh, more or less the exact same spot that it bounced before, simply saying, if Lulu pulls back down there again, buy the dip. One of my favorite takeaways that I would like you to have from this particular program is the double top. Because one thing that I wanna make sure you're all very, very clear is you'll see a lot of these, uh, and a lot of traders will play these double tops very bearish before they turn into double tops. One of the ways it turns into a double top is the candle, the candle or price action must close below the neckline. If that doesn't happen and the trend is bullish, guess what I'm gonna do, ladies and gentlemen? My plan is going to be to go long at these levels. So if we see a double top like this, I'm actually gonna be looking to go long at these levels because you guys know how many times 
this particular pattern turns into this pattern right here. That happens so frequently, it's insane. And it normally occurs when you're in a nice bullish trend and traders get too excited because they're expecting the, the whole market and the whole stock to crash. So this is an exact situation and perfect scenario on Lulu, right? As you can see right here, actually, when this kind of double top pattern happened right there, double top and then it eventually retraced and just kept on going higher, is because the trend was already very bullish. Zach says, you'd buy it again at the same spot, not a higher low. It's a good question, Zach. So technically it would be a higher low because the most recent low is that wick right there. So as long as it stayed above there, then I would be buying it at a higher low. You are correct. So if it pulled back in here and bounced, that would actually be a higher price than that wick. If I set up the trade to go bullish on Lulu here, with the stop loss down here, that would be buying it at a lower low. Valid question. And the reason that I would be a little bit and try to buy it as low as I could, Zach, is because if you go to a weekly time frame on Lulu, I think we could all agree that Lulu has had a decent, nice bullish run. All right? This is a weekly chart. So anytime I'm looking at a strike, a stock that looks like this, this extended, this high on a weekly chart, I really want to buy it as low as I possibly can. And if I miss the move, that's fine. And if I catch it, also fine. Great question. All right, next on the list was a swing trade that we actually got stopped out of. It was a very high risk, high reward trade. It did not pan out well. Uh, I figured it wouldn't. I'll show you why I took it, but no big deal. We lost on the trade. Ladies and gentlemen, that happens. I share winners and I share losers. I know that's kind of a crazy thing to consider, but I do that. This was the candle that really got me excited about this, this setup. It was a little bit of a lower shadow type of hammer-ish candle. What was interesting is that Cron, take a simple C-R-O-N, pulled back uh, to the 200, trade up, trade down, and I was wondering if a double bottom pattern would form. Here's the cool part about double bottom patterns, ladies and gentlemen. You never know if they're going to form until they've formed. <laughs> right? So the same thing with a double top is if I'm going to play a double bottom, that's in the direction of a trend. It becomes much easier. And if I'm playing a double bottom, I want to be the person that got in as low as possible, not necessarily as high as possible. So with C-R-O-N, um, on C-R-O-N, we look to play it bullish with the low of this candle. So low of this candle and low of this candle, you'll actually notice we're not, not quite the same. So low of this candle is 1460. On July 18th, if that candle had been like four or five pennies lower, four or five pennies lower, I would have liked the trade much, much more, but it did not happen. So, oh well. Anyway, took the trade, got stopped out, didn't work, and all is well on that particular trade. So we made one R on Lulu. Lost an R on a really high risk, high reward trade on CRON. Uh, this is the weekly time frame. So the weekly chart on CRON, the trend actually looks pretty good still. And on Friday, all is not lost on this trade because we did have some put sales on Friday that actually worked out really well. And I was, uh, I'm highly considering doing those again on CRON. So for those of you who might not be afraid of potentially owning shares on Kronos Group, one strategy you could consider would be to sell some puts down here at $10 for 12 cent limit. Only if you want to own shares. This is 9-20-2019. So 9-20-2019. So if you're looking at potentially owning some shares of CRON 
at $10. This is a strategy that you could use and implement to get the stock down. Right now it's at $14.69. So that would be like 40% premium, 40% discount than where the stock is trading right now. And that's a pretty, uh, pretty big deal. So that's a strategy that you could use to get CRO in at a nice longer term support. Adriano says it is at a nice spot for a long term, isn't it? CRO in, it is, yep. So that will be a wonderful spot at $10 to snag some. And looking at it big picture, Adriano, really nice resistance here, really nice resistance here. Break out, trade it back down, trade it back up, trade it back down. So you guys can see that's why I was looking at and attempted to play that one long, and it just simply did not work out, which is okay. All right, that's fine. Some things like that happen. Anshul says, could you please talk on VMW? Uh, what time is it, 421? I think we'll have some time for VMW. Okay, VMW. All right, so that's Cron, AKA Kronos Group. Those are two, two approaches that you can look at right now. Um, and I'm gonna keep an eye on this one. Today's candle, I believe, was a one penny away from a shave top. So if Kronos Group can close above the high of today's candle, then I will be more interested in going long again. Michael says, would you do the Cron put sale before earnings? No, I would not. I don't mind doing it for September, Michael, because technically September is only, how many days is that away? Uh, 60 days. So it's only 60 days away. It would be over earnings, but even if Kronos had terrible earnings in August, it would require the stock to be down 31% cheaper than where it is right now. And that's not even including the, uh, the actual premium for the put sale. So if you want to buy Kronos now at 14, buying it at 10 is a no brainer. So to answer your question, no, that wouldn't matter to me at all. Adrian says, what's your general recommendation for swings around earnings? Do you sell before or do you hold through? That's a very good question, Adrian. So my answer to that is, if you want to be in the trade as an investment or as a longer term trade, like many, many months, then you're going to have to hold over earnings. For me personally, I like my long-term investments. I have no concern at all holding over earnings, especially if you have protection. So if you have some protective puts or you have a collar, some way of protecting your shares on a longer term scale, perfect, no worries at all. On the other side, from a swing trade perspective, if you have bought the stock at a really low level, so let's go look at Dropbox just as an example, okay? So Dropbox has earnings coming up in about two weeks. Let's say hypothetically, Adrian, that you bought Dropbox down here around $20.50. All right, so you bought it back here in January at $20.50 and right now it's at $24. So you're up 20%. And you're like, you know what? I don't think Dropbox is gonna gap down 20% on earnings and if it does, I'll just be back to break even. So I don't mind the risk reward because if Dropbox gaps up on earnings, it's gonna absolutely skyrocket. So if that's kind of your perspective, that's absolutely fine. The third thing about a swing trade holding it over earnings is if you have a very small position, and I do mean like legitimately and numerically small, so let's say you have like 20 shares on Dropbox. You have 20 shares on Dropbox. I mean, your investment is incredibly small. I think we could all agree that that is not a sizable position on a $24 stock, right? We're talking 480 bucks. Okay, every single person here can afford to lose 480 bucks. And that's if the stock goes to zero, right? If the stock went to zero, you'd lose $480. So if you have a small position over earnings as a swing trade, I'm also totally fine with that because it all comes down to risk. Am I right, Adrian? And did I answer your question, my good friend? Eve says, how about swing trade options over earnings? Again, Eve, it all comes down to risk. 
So the answers on options are the exact same that I have with shares. The challenge with options, and you mentioned Amazon literally being one of the most expensive option plays that you can do, it just comes down to your risk. We definitely will be looking at Amazon in just a few minutes. Okay, so on Dropbox, DBX, what I wanted to do is we've been in this trade now since July 10th, and we haven't moved the stop, and obviously it doesn't appear that it's gonna be working exceptionally well. So what I'm gonna now do on Dropbox is move the stop so that if Dropbox continues going down, we're gonna lose on it very small. All right, so we'll be moving our stop to 2410 on ticker symbol DBX as our stop loss. Okay, come over here. Now again, for anyone who wants access to this particular trading journal right here, the one that we do all of our trades in and all of our updates, you can get access to this. Anyone who subscribes to the trading room, uh, you would get access to this. And the reason it's beneficial is because let's say after a long day of work, you just come in and you pull up your worksheet, you can find out immediately what trades we have and the exact trade setup and the chart for that trade. You know, so if you want to come in and just kind of see visually with your eyes what setups we have and why, you can do so pretty much at any point in time. Uh, again, coming home from work or whatever, you can kind of go in and just visually see that. So it's a very useful tool to have in your tool belt for trading. And again, we give that to anyone who subscribes to the trading rooms. All right, so let me now also go into Slack, also which is provided to anyone who joins. Uh, new updated stop loss on the swing trade. Oops, sorry, on the DBX swing trade. Okay, now everyone just got a text message alert uh, that we're updating the stop on Dropbox. Okay, and again, maybe she bounces, maybe she doesn't. I'm not entirely sure. Now, this one, Eve, is one that you're probably going to be interested in. iRobot. Very going to be a very intriguing play with iRobot. Uh, on earnings. iRobot usually gaps pretty strongly. Now back on the 21st of May, I mentioned that it, that should be the low on iRobot, uh, and I really wasn't specifically wrong. Uh, when, I, when I mentioned low, I mean this low right here. We did barely break below it, but not really. We held it pretty strong. So we've been trading sideways on iRobot for a while. Now what's interesting about this particular move is if you are playing this one, it's gonna be a decent support and there's gonna be a lot of gap opportunities to occur. Zach says, how did you know that would be the low? Years of experience, my good friend. <laughs> that's, really, that's really the answer, man. Put in 11 years and you'll start to know some of those things. All right, so iRobot, now that that has been the low, the thing that I do know for sure is here's my levels for earnings on iRobot. If iRobot gaps up into this green box, it's gonna be very bullish on earnings. And if iRobot gaps down into this red box, it's gonna be very bearish on earnings. I do not know which one's going to happen. But what I can say is we can look at, I can give you, for those of you who want to practice a straddle strangle, IRBT, I can give you the, the, uh, the numbers right now that you could consider easily on this particular trade. So, for example, there's two ways that you could do this on earnings. You could do a straddle, or you could do a strangle. And I'll, I'll talk about the pros and cons of both of them very quickly, and yes, I do have a video on this topic. So a straddle would be a $92 July 26 call and put. 92 put would cost $5.20. 92 call would cost $5.60. 
So to buy one contract a piece, you're going to be spending $1,800. I think I have that math right. I'm like, let me just make sure that's correct. So 520 plus 560, sorry, 1080. I always, I always do that sometimes. 1080. So that's how much you would be spending out the gate. All right. Now, when people talk about options and how cool options are, I'm not disagreeing that options aren't cool. But what I am saying is there's no way you could take this exact trade and spend less than this amount of money. Now, if I wanted to take shares and buy like, you know, uh, six shares, if I, if I wanted to buy something small, like six shares right now in iRobot, I could do that and spend less than $1,080. And those shares obviously would not expire. So this would be referred to as a straddle. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at the exact numbers later so you can all see how these earnings plays work out. Because it's really all always a coin flip and then I'll kind of give you a cool little insight. So $92 straddle for $726 would cost $1080. Now type in a seven if you have no idea what a straddle is and you've never heard of it in your entire life. Because the thing is, I'm gonna have a lot of sevens. That's why I'm not gonna go too heavy into these strategies because it's really not that important. I just happen to know a lot of option strategies. <laughs> so I'm really not here to try to impress anybody. I just want you to all know uh, for those who care. All right. And now if you're going to do a strangle, what I would do is I would look at the option that um, is out of the money. So you go with a 97 50 726 call would cost you 350 approximately. 350. Worst case, that's the ask. So it costs you about 350. And then the uh, an out of the money put, so let's say eighty two fifty put option would cost you not very much. Eighty two fifty put would cost you a dollar sixty five. Eighty two fifty put for seven twenty six would cost a dollar eighty five. Would be the ask. So your total investment for the strangle would be 350 plus 185, which would cost $535. 535. Now, if iRobot gaps up into 100 and then keeps running to 105, this option will be worth a lot more than 350. This option won't be worth anything. So what we will do is we will come back and we'll talk about tomorrow and or the next day what those options actually ended up doing. We'll discuss the pros and cons. One way that I personally do agree it probably has the best edge and options is play the same thing all the time. Meaning just always buy calls. <laughs> or always buy puts. Whatever you're gonna do, do the same thing all the time. So if you're gonna, if you play, if you play uh, earnings on stocks very frequently, just play the same thing constantly and it will improve your edge slightly because there is no, there's not really a green, right? Like in roulette, okay? There's no real green in the market. The stock might not gap and you might lose your premium, but it'll gap up at some point. That's like, that's a guarantee. Like you're going to hit, if you buy call options enough on a trade over earnings, it'll hit at some point. Okay, cool deal. So that would be an options play that one could consider over iRo on iRobot. Now, if you don't want to do either one of those, which is what I'm gonna do, and just wait for earnings, which is what I'm gonna do, and figure out where it opens, then we can play it accordingly. Because again, if iRobot opens in this green box, I'll be looking for a bullish trade. 
If iRobot gaps down into this red box, I'll be looking for a bearish trade. Any questions about that so far? And then we'll move on to our next stock. Janet says, nope, she's good to go. All right, cool. Let's dive into the next one. Next one is Alibaba. B-A-B-A. -B -A. And Alibaba, so I had a swing trade set up on Alibaba. 175.20 by 171.20. And I canceled that today. So that was one that I had planned. And what I'm now going to do is actually decrease that setup and then put the stop there. And we're going to look to go long on Alibaba above the high of today, which was 174.28. So we're going to go 174.42 by 170.42. So this is going to be the new official swing trade on Alibaba. And then what I'm going to do is show everyone a little bit, uh, a little bit of information about the options on this one, just because I want to make sure that people have the proper understanding um, of options. Because a lot of people, again, love to talk about how great options are, but very few people properly discuss the risk of options. Okay, 170, 42. This is going to be shares, is how I'm personally going to play it. I think it's a great setup based on a retest gap opening, because it's not triggered yet. I'm gonna come over here. All right, I'm gonna come over to the trade now. Again, you guys are getting all this for free. New swing trade on Baba. Updated really from the other one. Okay, so let me kind of break this down for you on Alibaba. Let's say you're like, man, I'm really, really, really bullish on Baba. You could buy an option expiring this Friday. Option expiring this Friday. If you're like insanely bullish, I don't think I spelled that right, but that's okay. I need to get close. Hold on, I gotta at least get close. Insanely bullish. All right. Now, if you're insanely bullish, you could go with a let's say a 175 call. 175 call. And a 175 call would cost right now a dollar a dollar fifty two. That's the bid. So at the high, let's go look at what the high would be for that particular option today. Bow, bow, bow. What is the high of the option? All right, high of the option today was pretty much that. Uh, give me three seconds. A dollar sixty. So the high of the option today was a dollar sixty. So you have two choices. If you did this week's expiration, you actually could do very easily a dollar sixty as an entry with a sixty cent stop. Now you'd only be able to be in that trade two, maybe three days, because again, it literally expires Friday. Okay, so you do have a very short period of time on that option. Type in a one if that makes sense. Again, if you're buying this Friday, you, you can literally only be in this trade two to three days. You do not want this option expiring in the money at expiration. Okay, so you guys all get that. Now, if you did a more longer term option, let's say you go with regular August, which is August 16th, and you went with a 175 call. Again, that expires regular August. Now, what you look at is the high of that option is four fifth, uh, five dollars. The low of three fifty. Okay, so now we're talking. You buy it at five dollars with a stop at three fifty. Here's the thing. That's a dollar fifty of risk. Here's what most people do not do. Most people do not go, all right, well, $1.50 of risk, so what is my R? My R 
is whatever it is. Let's say my R is 100. Because most people who trade options usually do it because they have a smaller account. So if you have an R of 100 and your stop loss is $1.50 on the option, how many contracts can you buy to mathematically ensure that you lose $100 or less? The answer is zero. Because if you take 100 and you divide it by 150, you're gonna come up with a number that is less than one. So since options only work in 100 share increments, you can't buy 66 shares of an option contract. You can only do 100 shares of an option contract. So this is where the challenge lies, ladies and gentlemen, is most people will get into a trade on an option based on the stock price and not the option price. Am I right, Eve? That's what Eve is mentioning in the chat pane right now. So what Eve would do is just take, would just get in at 174.42, get into some calls, and then if the stock comes down to here, get stopped out. But the thing is, you don't really know what that is based on the stock price, right? Because the option price can change drastically regardless of what the stock price does. So for example, the stock does this and then trades sideways, trades sideways, trades sideways, and then drops, right? That option could go from five to two very quickly. And now you're down $3 per contract. And how much is $3 per contract? Well, it depends on how many contracts you bought. I love options, boys and girls. They're really, really fun. But it all is based on risk. If you do not know how to properly mitigate nor calculate your risk exposure on an option, you can get straight up Poseville, AKA you can lose a lot of money. Now, here are the very basics of options. If you're bullish, you can buy some call options. All right, so if you wanna make money when the stock goes up, you can buy calls, it's that simple. But, at some point, you need to know the price at which you're buying the option, you need to know the stop at what the option's gonna be, and you need to know how you determine the price. Banal says, how'd you get the $1.60 and stop loss of 60 cents? If you subscribe to Real Life Trading, I'll show you. <laughs> I have another little chart, you can't see it, it's on the other screen, it has all that information. Tracy said, I subscribe today. What? Uh-oh. Tracy's already doing it, ladies and gentlemen. She's already getting in. Robert says, I will watch the replay. I lost service on the part where you must have said that you think Bob is rising 10 bucks pre-earnings. Uh, yeah, man. I can easily do that. Question is, Mr. Robert, what if it rate, what if it goes up uh, $8, like up into like 180? I mean, <laughs> so here's the question. Can Baba go up $10 in three weeks? What do you guys think? Is that possible? Has it ever happened before? And the answer is yes. Yep, yeah, it happened here, it happened here. It almost happened here. So we're gonna see if it works again. I'm not saying this trade is going to work, but I am saying I do. I do like it. I have been planning it, and I really do like that candle. I do like the upper shadow. I do like that volume. All right, that's it. That's my thoughts on Baba. Next on the list is silver. Now, unfortunately, boys and girls, we are already in silver. So this is going to be a trade that you're going to simply just have to uh, watch us watch us manage over the next few days. All right, ticker symbol SLV. Eve says, which room should I join for day trading and swing trading, the E-minis? Uh, you should join the morning day trading room. But it kind of depends. So yeah, I would uh, pop into the morning day trading room. That'll be, that'll be the one you're gonna wanna go with. All right, boys and girls. So again, for silver, Ticker symbol SLV. 
This is a trade that we are already in. We got in back here, uh, specifically on this day, right here, July 15th. Now this one, I really do like uh, this trade as an option because silver was pretty relatively inexpensive. The options only cost 65 cents and we were able to have a stop at absolute zero. That's what that stands for. So there was no mathematical way we were going to lose a full risk unit on silver with a stop at zero because we weren't going to hold that long. So those options only cost 65 cents. The options right now on that exact trade, that is the silver 65 September 30th calls for $14. Those are presently worth a dollar fifty, which means what? It means that it's over a one hundred percent return, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty sexy. So for those uh, traders who are in that position, we have a month or so to manage it. Uh, let the moving averages catch up, and I do think that silver will eventually trade up into sixteen dollars. If you want to think, if you want to know why I think that, if we come over here to a weekly chart on silver, it does kind of appear, if I just hide all my lines for a second, it does kind of appear that silver is working on a double bottom. Now, the resistance that silver is trying to break through is this red line. This red line is the 200 simple moving average on a weekly chart. 200 simple moving average on a weekly. Big resistance. It has been a big resistance numerous times in the past. Michael says to hedge against a downturn, would you sell calls? We very well might, Michael, sell some calls against those calls. Yep. Very well could do that. I like doing that strategy. It's a very fun strategy. So if silver breaks out of this 200 simple moving average and this double bottom plays out, silver could make a really nice pop even higher than 16. Now I think 16 is a reasonable target for the trade that we're in, but bigger picture, you're welcome to start keeping your eyes on some silver plays here, boys and girls. I'm not a silver bug in the sense of I think the whole economy is going to crash and you should buy silver because the dollar is going to collapse and there's not going to be anything worth trading. I'm not that kind of trader. But I do think that based on some technical charts that silver could have a little bit of a pop and on a longer term fundamental play, I do like silver and I do think it's going to go higher. Eve says, Jeremy suggested to join the morning room for swing trading spy. My understanding was morning room is for only day trading. Well, Eve, that's a great question, but in the morning room, I have the ability to really look at anything at any point in time. So if someone has a question about SPY and E-minis uh, for any time frame, I mean, we have five hours in class. I can easily spend, you know, three or four of those minutes to review any trade that you want on the SPY for whatever time frame. Because I look at the SPY and the E-minis every single day. And ladies and gentlemen, bottom line is, if you sign up for something and you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. I hope you guys know that. <laughs> I'm not here to take your money. I'm here to enrich lives. So if you sign up for something, you're like, hey, that's not really what I wanted. That sucks. Not, I'll just give you your money back. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not in this for them. I'm not in this for your credit cards, my friends. I have a much, much bigger goal and dream and vision than that. Okay? So I hope everyone understands that. I mean, I'm going to be here all week. So if you guys sign up for something and you like it, awesome. If you don't like it, I'll just give you your money back. Type in a one if that's cool. I promise. Right? Hand on the Bible, hand on my father's grave. That's just the way I roll. If you don't like something, I'm not going to hold it back. It's, it's okay. You like it, great. If you don't like it, no big deal. I'm not, out, I'm not here for your money. Money is everywhere. Money grows on trees. Okay? So I love money. Money loves me. It's not a big deal. I'll just give you your money back. It's okay. <laughs> Mark says no one on the internet would ever do that, by the way. It's weird. It's very weird. But Mark says, please revisit the offer this week to join your trading room. Yeah, let me do that, Mark. 
So really quick, hopping back over here for just a moment. If you do want to join my trading room, uh, here's, a, here's an offer that we do have. There are gonna be other offers available. Um, this one is going to be for $2.49 a month, and it gives you access to all of our premium products, okay? The back trading marathon, the cryptocurrencies, the algorithmic program, the uh, hedging with weekly options. So you're gonna have a lot of premium products that you get access to. Uh, if you want a really, really cool discount off of that, let me come over here. You can do this for a whole year. If you're like, yeah, this stuff is legit, I'm in, I want it, then I'll give you everything for a whole year for $2,100 if you want. So I'll send that link as well in the chat pane. And uh, again, it's like you're gonna save like two grand if you wanna do this. Alice says, is the crypto program a trading room or lessons? It's lessons, but it also comes with access to this guy right here, Real Life Trading Cryptos, where I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And of course, Alice, as you know, I have the ability to look at and kind of trade and talk about any type of setup that you want at any point in time. Justin says, before last day of the year, can I refund? LOL, just kidding. <laughs> no, that's a valid question, man. Leonard says, what was the cost for just the morning room? So Leonard, great question. Um, the cost for just the morning room is actually $199. So for the price of the morning room, you'll actually get all of the rooms if this is all that you want. So this is the retail price of the morning room right now, it's $199. So it's kind of like one of those annoying fast food things where it's cheaper just to get the drink anyway, even if you don't want the drink. I'm just giving you the drink and the fries. Even if you don't want them, you can give them to a homeless person or someone who needs them more than you do. If you don't want the drinks and fries, curly fries, dude, of course, those are the only fries to consume. <laughs> if you don't like curly fries, what are you doing with your life? Those are the ones to eat. So yeah, if you want the morning room uh, and the afternoon room and the weekly options newsletter and the trading journal and all that kind of good stuff, it's $199 a month. So it's $199 a month for just the rooms. It is $249 a month if you want access to all this other cool stuff that we have. I mean, uh, hedging with options, by the way, this particular program is probably worth 15 grand, and I'm not exaggerating. That is such a killer course. Oh my gosh. And then you have the algo class. Oh, algo class is killer. Cryptocurrencies is great. The back trading marathon. You get to watch me do trading for seven hours straight. And then if you want this for the year, if you already know, like, yeah, I'm in, I want it. This is the year package. So feel free to dive in. All of this will be good until 1 a.m. on Monday. So pretty much however many hours that is from now, 96 hours, no, it's probably more than that. Monday of next week, it's gonna be gone. So Monday of next week, all of this is off, everything is over with, you can't get any of this pricing ever again. You know, that whole, that whole spiel. All right, let's get back into trading and Ashley says, you can tell Tracy her Slack link has been sent. Oh, snap. Tracy's about to join. Tracy's getting on board. <laughs> Welcome, Tracy. So Tracy just signed up. If you guys want to be a part, be, be with Tracy. That's not, her name does not have an E, I don't think. I don't think it has an E. Mark says, 50% discount for the first one to join. <laughs> Get in, boys and girls. Julio says, if I only trade futures or Forex, what would you recommend for me? Um, I'll recommend that you and I do some work together. Uh, email me, and let's do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Realistically. 
Eve says afternoon is five to six. So closing e minis by 6 p.m. Eastern. That means that you will hold cash session to continue in the morning. Usually, Eve, I'm in and out of my e minis trading. Um, I do take trades at night. That is correct. So after 6 p.m. Eastern, which is coming up in five minutes, uh, I will take some e minis trades tonight. That is correct. Tonight, and then I will most likely have exit those before U.S. market open at 9.30. Julio said, how much would that be, personal coaching? It depends, man. If you want to do Forex and futures, uh, I'm, I'm newer to Forex. Well, let me rephrase. I apologize. I'm newer to futures. I've never traded Forex. So it's a lot less expensive than doing personal coaching for something else because I don't have that much experience doing it. So I can only charge you what I'm worth. Right, so for day trading stocks, day trading options, something like that, it's gonna be a much higher, uh, much higher ticket because I can truly make so much money doing those things. But with Forex, I've never traded it in my life. So it's a little bit less, uh, it's much less actually to do Forex or futures because they're so new, so new. So honestly, just email me um, if you want and we'll come up with a package. Because it depends, man, it depends on how much help you need. Right? If you're like, hey, I just need one session to review some stuff, cool. If you're like, hey, dude, I need you know, three months of your time, and I really want you to just absolutely kick my butt and make me cry and turn me into a profitable trader, then I can do that as well. <laughs> That's funny. Robert Falco says, drinking milkshakes is the coaching he charged the most for. If you want to drink milkshakes with me, it's going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> I love milkshakes. Pablo says, can I pay for Forex and train me for day trading? <laughs> if you're day trading Forex, absolutely. Of course. Robert Thompson says, that's what I need. Oh, you need someone to kick you around, man? Whip you into shape? Dude, I can do that. I can do that. Scott McKay is in the chat room right now. He'll tell you it's worth it. So is Robert Falco. So is Tracy. Um, it's, I'm brutal, man. There's only, only two ways, only two things happen when you work with me. There's, there's literally, there's only two outcomes. Okay, if you work with me, one-on-one, -on -one, you quit or you make money. There is no other way around it. I'm gonna push you to your breaking point and you're just gonna give up or you make money. That's it. It's only two outcomes. All right. I'm gonna go a little bit long, type in a one if that's okay. I normally stop at about now at an hour, but we're gonna to have to go a little bit long because I wanna make sure I cover all this. And you know, I had a lot to talk about. You know, we had to discuss pricing and stuff like that. All right, let's go look at Shopify. Oh, Shopify, <laughs> good grief. Look at this monthly chart on Shopify. Oh my goodness. Shopify is going berserk. Now, I had some people ask me how they would play Shopify or should they buy Shopify right now? Here's my answer. If you want to buy Shopify right now, I would personally, if I had your money and I was buying Shopify with your money, I would do like one or two shares literally. And then if it gapped up, I'd probably sell those shares, lock in a profit and then buy the dip. Because if Shopify gaps up on earnings, it will get faded. And if Shopify gaps down on earnings, I don't know what they're going to do. It really depends on how far it gaps down. I love this trend. The trend is phenomenal. Shopify has been an absolute bullish machine. Just straight up crushing it. I don't know what's going to happen on earnings on Shopify. I wish I did. It fully depends on the open. But if you want to day trade Shopify with me, okay, earnings are coming out in just a few days, well, a week or two. You're going to have to trade with me next week. All right, that's going to require you to be a part of the trading room. So Shopify earnings, we will see. If you're in bullish right now, find a place to lock in some profits. And once those profits are locked in, find the location to buy the next dip. My buddy Bob says he bought to close the Shopify puts for a gain. Great job, Bob. High five, my friend. 
Boom. Well done. Eve says, if I join the monthly at $1.99, may I upgrade to the yearly later and top up the difference? Yeah. Sure thing. I'll, I, will, I will allow that. That's fair. And I know my buddy Daniel also has a put sale on Shopify. Again, trend looks really, really nice. Love the trend on Shopify, boys and girls. So all I can say on this one, it made a brand new all-time high today. Highest it's ever been was today. If you're going long here, do so very, very cautiously. I love Shopify as a company, but it really does need to pull back a little bit. Okay? So with Daniel doing some put sales, I don't mind that because they expire in two weeks. And he'll buy that one back. Probably bought it back today, most likely for a small gain. Okay, so Shopify trend looks good. Amazon. All right, folks. Here's what I think is going to happen on Amazon. Amazon, if it gaps above two, zero, if it gaps above the all-time high, Amazon's gone. Okay? If, it, if Amazon on earnings gaps above 2050, to the moon. Zoo. It's just gonna keep on flying and we will day trade it mathematically I know a lot of you might not know this because a lot of you are newer to kind of the way I analyze things and when I look at things but based on maps Amazon likely hits 4,000 in 4.4 years On the fundamentals, if they, are, if they continue doing what they're doing right now and nothing else, if they just keep doing what they're doing and they don't have a split or anything, Amazon will at least double minimum in 4.4 years. Now, for some of you, that might seem like a long time, and it kind of is, but I'm just letting you all know that is almost a mathematical certainty. And... I'm very bullish on Amazon long term. Short term, you know, is a kind of a cute little overshadow today. We can obviously watch it tomorrow to see what it does. If Amazon gaps up above the high of today's candle, I would be bullish. I mean, if Amazon gaps above here, I would be bullish. If Amazon gaps down, I would be bearish um, tomorrow. And earnings are just right around the corner. So today, this week, we will be discussing more on Amazon. I don't really specifically have a bearish play on Amazon over earnings. If Amazon gaps down on earnings, it would have to be a very specially placed gap for me to be very bearish on it. But whatever Amazon does, which most likely will be bullish, we will drag the markets higher substantially. So Amazon, last earnings, they did well, and they opened kind of flat. Earnings before that, they did well, they opened kind of flat. Earnings before then, they did well and opened kind of flat. Earnings before then, they did well and opened kind of flat. So if they do a good earnings again, it's going to fly. Now, we'll see. I don't know. I'm not really sure. But Amazon's been doing great, and mathematically, I don't know why they won't continue to go higher. EA, Electronic Arts. We've been watching this triangle build on Electronic Arts and earnings on this one is just a few days away. You have a high wave candle. And realistically, if I was gonna play this tomorrow, this is a few pennies away from a tweezer bottom. I would really just look for a breakdown and a continuation of the trend or a break higher and a little bit of a pop coming into earnings. JL, my good buddy, has a put side candle, uh, a put sale that expires in August at 85 because he does not mind owning shares of EA. Kevin says this is an inside candle on Electronic Arts. It absolutely is. Yep. So what I'm gonna to do tomorrow morning is put EA on my list just in case it gaps down. What I want everyone to understand is I'm not saying it's going to gap down. 
I'm just literally saying if it does gap down tomorrow and open below the low of today's candle, I will be shorting it. So I'm going to put EA on my list just in case we gap down when we can short. As far as the swing trade is concerned, I really don't know. We'll see. Very, very indecisive. Square. I think you guys all know I'm bullish on square, right? Okay. I think you all understand that. Square. Let's see. Here's the weekly chart on square. And I truly hope that square trades sideways until earnings and then gaps above this green line on earnings. I don't think that's going to happen. Usually square does not gap very much. But if square gaps above these highs on earnings, gone. Hashtag moon Lambo. Hashtag it'll pull a Shopify. That will be a very, very strong gap. Now, I can go ahead and tell you right now, in my opinion, if you're listening to this, if this gaps up to this level, it would fade because that would be a very big gap on, on square, and then it would continue higher. It would still be a very, very bullish signal, but it would most likely fade the day of earnings. Usually, square does not gap very much on earnings. If you want a way to take advantage of square, you could sell a put at 60 for December if you don't mind owning at least 100 shares of square at 60 which I think is a very smart thing to do, is own some shares of Square, like the lower the better. And realistically, all we're doing right now is we're pulling back. What I'm gonna do on Square is I'm gonna put Square on my list for tomorrow morning as a day trade. This is a very cute candle, and there's a nice little run up right here. So if Square gaps down tomorrow, there's nothing really stopping it from pulling back a little bit more. And if Square gaps up tomorrow, it could easily go with the trend. So I'm going to put Square on my list tomorrow morning, and you guys will get to see how a professional plays Square or plays any stock as a continuation trade. Maybe I play it. Maybe I don't. I don't know. It's not the morning yet. But I'm just letting you know that I'll be watching Square tomorrow morning based on this daily chart. As far as the swing trade is concerned, the way I think a lot of people could consider playing square would be like this. Buy 10 shares here. Buy 30 shares here. Buy 170 shares here. 60 shares here. That's what I would consider a decent plan on square. That's called pyramiding, ladies and gentlemen. Buy some buy a little bit more, and then buy your bigger chunk at a nice low level. That way you have 200 shares of square, and then I would just hold those shares until they went higher. <laughs> That's pretty much how I would personally, at this particular point in time, play square, and I'm very excited about earnings. Uh, and then this put sale, you could also do that put sale at 60. I'm really confident that that one could work out nicely uh, for anyone who wants to do that. All right, we got two left. Thomas says, could you do a $70 put sale over earnings? Uh, yeah, what expiration? Just regular August? Regular August, 70, yep, I like it. Looks really nice. All right, boys and girls, so on Google, I have an outstanding bet right now with my trading community that Square will fill the entirety of this gap before the end of September. Right now, Google is trading extremely sideways. It is literally in the middle of its long-term moving averages on the daily chart. And I would like to, and I am potentially considering doing another credit spread on Google, and this one over earnings. One of my theories, and I don't know if you guys like this theory or not, but track with me here for a moment. Type in a one if you're bullish on the internet. If you're like, yeah, I think the internet's probably gonna hang around a little bit longer. If you're bullish on the internet, you probably should be bullish on Google. Google owns the internet. Whatever company you type in, you type it into a Google search bar, and then it pulls up. They're collecting your data everywhere. So with that being the case, uh, pretty bullish on Google. 
Now, you can own some shares. It's pretty much like buying the price of gold. Um, Alice has no worries about regulation of Google. None at all. Zero, zero worries about that for me personally. Because there's not a question in my mind, Alice, is will they have more battles with the, you know, the, the, the sentin or the sentin or whatever about regulatory size and monopolies. Like I know that's going to happen. It's not over. It will continue to occur. I'm talking long term. Five years from now, Google will be higher than where it is now, in my opinion. So here's my, here's my thought process on Google. I'm looking at a bull put spread expiring August week two. Uh, if you guys have no idea what this is, it's okay. You don't have to do this trade. But I'm looking at a 10, oh, there's just no money. Mm. I was looking at a 1060, 1055. Selling the 1060 for $5 and buying the 1055 for $4.50. Ah, oh, it's just no money. Just not enough premium. What if I go to like September and I do a farther away? Let me do September 9. 55 September which is all the way down here 955 pays three dollars and twenty cents a premium and then the 950 pays three dollars a premium there's just very very little money on Google right now which is actually probably a good sign that you could buy some out of the money options if you really wanted to. For example, if you really were thirsty and want to trade on Google, you could consider um, a 1250 call just in case it gaps up largely. A 1250 call, well, actually, they only have 1260. The 1260 call option for September on Google only costs about $780 per contract. So if you're willing to make a bet over earnings, you could make a bet uh, that it gaps up. And again, I'm not saying it will, but the good news is if Google does gap down, it needs to gap massively into this area and then a lot of people will be trapped and we will play Google very bearishly. Otherwise, I'm expecting Google to either gap up and run or open flat. I don't know which one's going to happen, but that's my expectations. If Google does any one of the others, like if it gaps down, we will see. I can't find any premium realistically um, for a trade that I like. Uh, the premium is low, so something else you could consider for my option fans would be a 9-20-2019. 1180, 1300 debit spread. If you know your option stuff. So 1180, you could buy it for $2,700. And then the 1300 debit call, you could sell for 360. 360. So your total debit on that trade, if you really if you really want a nice trade on this one, would be 2,000. So 2,700 minus 3, 3600, or 360. So 2,700 minus 360, 2,340. Total debit. That'll be your max out of pocket cost for a pretty big return. Uh, that would be the exact same expiration, 9-20-2019, same expiration. And then if it doesn't gap big, obviously you could get out of the $1,300 call, which is way up here. You could just get out of that one and then hold on to your 1180s and sell some more against it if you really want to. If you have a larger account, if you're more experienced and more versed in options, that could be a way to play. What I'm getting at is implied volatility is low on Google. 
September implied volatility is about 22%, which is not very high. So you're probably not gonna wanna sell options. If you're gonna play Google, you're probably gonna wanna buy them. Okay, next on the list is AMAT. Type in a four if you made money on AMAT today for some day trades. I know a lot of real life traders did. So congratulations, this was one of the main stocks that we focused on this morning. And I was very happy that a lot of people played this bullish gap and go nicely. This was a good bullish gap and go, hey, Sandra Brooks, you made it. So very nice bullish gap and go on applied materials. So you got a gap on a weekly chart. That's an important thing. Very nice gap above this high wave candle. You took out this candle. AMAT looks pretty bullish, realistically. I like this gap, I really do. So my current plan, I mean, we, I can't buy it where it is right now. It just seems a little, just a touch too high. Too many white candles in a row is let's see if we can buy applied materials on a pullback tomorrow. This very well might become a weekly options newsletter play as well that will go out tomorrow, but I'm looking at playing AMAT on a pullback. Some kind, of, some kind of dip. I don't know exactly how big the dip will be, but if you're gonna play AMAT, the direction is unequivocally bullish and then you simply wanna just buy it low rather than buy it high and hope it goes higher. Even if we go a little bit higher tomorrow, I think there's a good opportunity that we could do a limit order and catch it on a pullback over the next two or three days. And next on the list is VMW. VMW doing some really good work to trap some bears. So VMW is putting in and posted some beautiful bear traps that I got trapped into. Nice morning star reversal pattern down here. Beautiful hammer candle, gorgeous gap. Let's look to buy some type of dip on VMware if you're playing it bullish. High of this candle, 183.96. High of today candle, 183.50. So we've almost made a new high. So I would wait for a new high to come in. That's where all the newbies are gonna buy. Then you're gonna wait for a rotation down and you're gonna buy the dip. So you don't wanna to buy to the newbies, you wanna to buy to the pro money down here. So VMware, I'll put it on the list for Thursday. We'll come back to it and we'll just see what it's doing. Ladies and gentlemen, that is today's afternoon swing trading room. I know we covered a lot and I know there's a lot of good questions. So thankfully I recorded everything and you will all get access to it as many times as you want. Tomorrow is Tech Giant Tuesday and here are the stocks we're gonna look at tomorrow. CBLK, IBM, Acacia, iRobot, I heard people like Apple, ALKS, Workday, The Trade Desk, Trade Desk, TWLO, Square, Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, obviously, Netflix, Shopify, Snapchat with earnings, SOLY, EA again, awesome. Kevin Lee says, thank you, I just joined. Great teacher. Hey, thanks Kevin. I appreciate that man, it's very kind of you. Looking forward to working with you Kevin and anyone else who wants to join Real Life Trading and being a part of the team. Thank you for being here my friends. We have a lot to learn, tons of growth ahead of us and many, many splendid and wonderful opportunities of enrichment together. Thank you for being a part of this free week. This is only day one. I will see you all tomorrow. And until then, love life, live life, and trade it. Bye.